Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the last exhibition match for tonight. It's going to be Felthus versus Shadow One Sun on Ravaged. This map, which should be familiar to anyone who has played StarCraft 2 ever, is a map which I have shown a few times before, but go over it briefly. Both players starting on these plateaus over in the northeast and southwest, each of which has about 5.4 metal available. Or not 5.4, that's 7.2. Miss multiplying here. Yes, there's four spots at plus 1.8. So you have plus 7.2 metal right here, so it's fairly lucrative in the main base, and then there's nice easy expansion, so you can easily get up to plus 25 without being too unsafe. Okay, this area, okay, never mind. This lower area is actually fairly unsafe. It's difficult to hold. This southern area, however, in the northern area, those are considerably safer. And then usually players will try to take the plateau expansions to the east and west. They'll also try to take the center, but the center is much more difficult to hold. The plateau expansions, you typically see a worker go to them just out of nowhere, take them pretty much naked, and then defend them a bit. And they don't often get attacked, but at this rank, at this level of play, we probably will see them get attacked quite a bit. And then after that, it's basically just a matter of trying to push through the center, usually along the sides. This map, however, does support pretty much every factory, and yet we're seeing both players go cloaky. No spiders, no jump, just cloaky versus cloaky. Which is a little surprising. So my Philthos is going to be Going for early constructor and Shadow One Sun going for early scythe because why not? Because Ravaged allows you to do that. Pretty much. Early scythe, not sure if they're gonna plan to scout with that or if they're going to attack with that or what. The one thing is because of the height of this map, wind generators are fairly prized. Like 0.8 to 2.5, that is a very good win rate. Like you want to build wind generators. There is no reason not to up here. Unless your opponent is going for jumps or spiders or is building a scythe and is actually attacking with it. Building a few sides. Wow, this is really cheesy. I, you don't see this very often. I want to see where this goes. This is going to be exciting. Got to keep my eye on this scythe. Because that is going to be a big deal. Or it's going to completely fizzle. One of the two. I hope it's not going to fizzle, though. I want to see this actually do something. We'll see, though. It looks like we have... The fail toss is... Well, continuing to build up. They're getting a pretty good economy set up. Their main base is not well defended, though. They have the Glaives, and the Glaives are moving out. That actually is a nice opening. Shadow One Sun doesn't know it, but that is a nice opening that has just broken open. By the time they get there, though, it probably will be closed up. They are, however, moving out. This is still the right time to move out. Well, sort of. Right-ish time. It was kind of any time, really. Yeah, now they're moving out. Another Glaive has been set up. Shadow One Sun needs to be very careful. They have to make absolutely certain that they are paying attention to these when they need to. And they are... Now the cursor is right there. They are paying attention to them somewhat. But that Glaive is going to be a problem. They need to be very careful about how they approach. And are they going to get in? I, th I want to know the decoy distance. I don't have any way of knowing that. Crap. Oh, and they that was very good. Very close there. Shadow One Sun just getting around that. Going for the commander directly. Very... I don't think this is going to work. I do not agree with this, but it might work out in the... No, it's going to work. It's surprisingly these glaives are not coming in in time to save Felthas' commander. And down goes the commander very early on. That is a massive blow. Getting back to economic parity and the build power reduction is huge. Shadow One Sun's commander still alive, still in their main base. They haven't expanded as much. But that was what they were going for. They went for the commander, and they got it! Very nice early commander kill. At this point, Felthos, their early expansions didn't really give them too much. And Shadow One Sun has a stronger economy in a more defensible position. So, being very mindful of the counterattack that would occur, because, well, at this point, Felthos knows Shadow One Sun does not have any military other than what they just threw at them. Because when you build two sides like that, you have nothing else. And yet they were able to pull that off, because they had the defensives, they have... The Glaives, they don't have to worry about any other expansions. They just built Overdrive inside their main base. And used the commander kill. I mean, it was a risky strategy. It required the commander to die. But the Glaives didn't come in to save it. And the two defenders, that wouldn't be enough. I expected the Glaives to come in. That's why I thought it was a bad idea. But turns out that actually worked out really nicely. So at this point, Shadow One Sun, a bit of reclaim to work with. Expanding outwards. Main thing, though, they have the economic advantage. And sort of the military advantage, the commander being the main reason for that, with a shotgun. 
But Feldhaus is taking a lot of territory, taking a lot of metal extractors. They have... They have a lot more glaives. They have a lot more on the map to work with. Because there are two more sides coming in. I don't know how well this is going to work. I could see them being used, I suppose, to come in, take out the main base, just rip apart all this stuff here. Rip apart the wind generators primarily. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And it looks like they are going around the back and... Are they going to... I think they're going to, the, to this expansion, to the plateau expansion I mentioned at the beginning. They expect Felthos will take this because usually the north player takes the eastern plateau expansion and the south player takes the western plateau expansion. That's generally how it goes. Shadow One Sun knows what they're doing. They're going for the eastern plateau expansion. Felthos has not taken it, but that is where Felthos would have gone. So Shadow One Sun is on point there. They are also building up good defenses around the map. Like They really don't want to get hit. And I can't blame them. I mean, they basically, they threw a lot into those sides, and they're throwing even more into these sides. And they know that a counterattack, a successful counterattack, would lose them the game. I'm a bit surprised they haven't defended this choke point, though, very much. As you can see, there are the defenders, so a few glaives would, they would die, but anything stronger? No. Stardust? Yeah, that blocks us off very nicely. But this area here is pretty open. A few warriors coming around the back, that would kill it. Failthos, however, is just going Mass Glaive. However, they... Okay, they do have a warrior. There we go. They have two warriors, in fact. One warrior down here and the other one over here. So yeah, the two warriors they have, that is going to be a problem. And the side is coming in. They do not see any expansion. That's good. Shadow One Sun needs to continue. They need to continue. They need to tear apart this main base. They need to rip apart all these wind generators. Just cut them all to pieces. Or go into the expansions. Oh, no, don't go into the expansions. There's too many. There's too much in the way of static defense in the expansions. Yeah, go here. Tear apart the energy. Force Felthos to be unable to use any of the power they have. And unfortunately, Shadow Wilson. Oh wow, very nice. Just barely. Didn't even know that was going to be the case too. They would have decloaked each other. Shadow Wilson just barely saw that coming, or didn't see it coming. Just having to move just in time. I, I'm actually getting a little suspicious here. <laughs> That's that was really good though. Well, kind of lucky more than anything, and we're actually going to see that luck run out right now as the two decloak each other. Another... So the size expose themselves coming in, and they are going to have to fight very hard. However, there's hardly anything in the way of defense. There's nothing internally. Getting rid of a caretaker. Are they going to go for the factory? Yeah, they're going to go for the factory. Just going straight for the heart. Okay, one of them going to the factory. That's a bit more prudent. One goes to the factory, one goes to the wind generators. Messes up anything trying to attack them, and also means that... Okay... The wind generator one, that's the one I really think is more important. Kill off the wind gens. One hit kills. As many of them dead as possible. Unfortunately, that scythe is also going to die, but that still dealt... That dealt some damage. Didn't deal enough, though. I mean, once the wind dies down again, but it doesn't really die down that much. If both sides had gone for the wind generators or for the factory, I think that would have worked a bit better. Like, going to the factory wasn't a terrible idea. It's just... Commit. <laughs> I mean, they were kind of hedging it on the wind generators, and if it weren't for those glaives coming in, that would have worked decently well. But the glaives are going to come in. It kind of sucks that they were spotted at first. But yeah, so, Felthos, they just didn't get lucky the first time around when Shadow One Sun happened to scout this. And now that Felthos has taken it, this is when Shadow One Sun should have gone, or could have gone, to be more productive. But then, who knows. At any rate, Shadow One Sun checking the northeast, sorry, the center west as well. Not the northeast, the northeast is Felthos' main base. Making it very clear they have committed to scythes. Which means Fail Thoughts needs to commit to screening tactics. You know, setting up a bunch of glaives, well, like this, or this at the edge of the map. Just screen out, try to find those scythes. Good escape though. Shadow One Sun got out of there. Fail Thoughts is screening this base, but they do not see any scythes because they won't. The scythes aren't there. They aren't there to be seen. The only downside is that Shadow One Sun, their defensive play, while kind of prudent when it comes to the use of scythes, means at this point... They have lost most of the territory on the map. They basically only have their one corner, and Failthos has everything else. They haven't taken these nine metal extractors, but they can. Failthos is the only one who can. Shadow One Sun cannot. Shadow One Sun gone for the more straightforward approach. Their sides still being something of the focus of their play, but they have Rockos now. They're basically set up for the mid-late game. Well, mid-game, not the late game. Not the late game at all. And as I say that, a crow is built up. So yes, they are in fact setting up for the late game. That's entirely what they're setting up for. This is a very cheesy game that Shadow One Sun has been playing. And they have been playing it decently well. They've been setting up the defenses. They've been setting up 
Now, their cheese has actually been relatively successful. Other than that, that last one was iffy. But if they hit the factory, if they hit the factory with that, that would have been massive. They killed, and they killed the commander early on, which evened out the economy, but still, pretty good. But yeah, this site's... This is the perfect opportunity. Oh no, they're going to go for the expansion? What? Okay, I don't totally agree with this. I can sort of see breaking this, but at the same time, that's not a lot of value. Those three sides, that would have been a factory kill right there. Even with the Lotus, well, maybe not with the Lotuses, but now at this point, these sides are all dead. They're going to go down swinging, but that's it. They're dead. And at the same time, over in the center, Rocco, Rocco fight going in Feldas' favor. Feldas could just march in and Shadow One Sun would have no chance. Mostly, Rocco's in the way of each other. That's the problem. Feldas' Rocco's are not helping each other out. But still, Shadow One Sun relying a lot on this crow. This crow still has another three minutes left. That's kind of going against my old rule of thumb. I've mentioned it before. But as a rule of thumb, if it takes more than a minute, it's probably too expensive for you right now. Now, crows can be a bit of an exception. Big Strider class units like that, I'd say two minutes at maximum. But at this point, given that Shadow One Zone has no other military, like they have defenses and that's it, this is extremely dangerous. They have defenses, they have weak economy, they have no military, well, they have a few glaze, but that's about it. Compared to Felthos, they have nothing. The only saving grace is these Rockos are getting in each other's ways. They aren't, they're not fight, they're fight moving, they're not just attacking. Or not moving. Now they're moving. Now Feldos is going to deal a lot of damage because these Rockers are actually moving. Although, unfortunately for them, there were a lot of stack defenses to deal with. Still, these Rockers... That's quite a lot. And Brawler's coming in as well. That's... On top of everything else, I think Feldos is going to take this. Shadow Onesen has some good ideas with those with that cheese, but that last two... Like, the, the second one I could sort of see because, you know, the factory's kind of risky. I still think both on the factory would have been a great idea, though. Compared to one on one, one on each, like either both wind gen or both factory, one of the two. But it looked like the factory would have gone down in time if both had attacked it. But really, neither of them accomplished much of anything. The wind generators that died didn't really amount to much. You know what? I kind of rescind this. The factory was a better choice overall. The wind generators don't go down quickly enough. If we were talking about a bunch of glaives, like half a dozen glaives that snuck into the main base, then yeah, totally go for the wind generators. Do not even touch this. But Scythe's kind of overkill the wind generators. Their reload speed is so low, they can't kill enough wind generators in time. Half a dozen glaives would have wiped the entire area out, but two sides? Even two sides wouldn't have been that much. Against the factory, though, two sides would have worked beautifully. And then this, I do not even understand. I can sort of see attacking... Peripheral expansions, but really with scythes? No. Scythes are close so they can go in and hit high-value targets like fusion plants and factories sometimes and commanders. That first commander kill was huge. I think after that, if Shadow One Sun had just not bothered with anything really flashy like that, they'd gone for more straightforward play, they probably would have been fine. Or maybe one more and actually killed the factory. But at this point, though, this crow taking a huge amount of damage from the Brawler. It's going to bomb everything down here. Is it going to kill everything? Is it going to kill anything? Is it going to bomb at all? There we go. There's the bombing. It will get rid of the factories. Oh, that's something, at least. So that should slow things down, but that crow has to get out of there. Got 5,000 health left. 4,000 health left. 3,000 health left. Well, th well 4,000-ish now. Taking a lot less damage. Takes out one of the Brawlers, at least. That's something. Takes out a second Brawler. But it still has a trident on its tail, and that is not enough. The crow gets out of there alive, tears apart both factories. I think Shadow One Sun might have just pulled their way back into the game with their last ace in the whole cheese strategy that they had on hand. That trident's gone down. The crow is alive. There still isn't that much of a conventional army on Shadow One Sun's side. Most of that military advantage is their commander and that crow. If we discount the commander and the crow, we are looking at a slight military disadvantage. We're looking at about 2.5k. Maybe 2.7k at most. So Shadow One's on still behind in actually if it's count that's Trident's two. They basically have no military on the ground. But they at least managed to slow Felthos down quite a lot. Now Felthos has to rebuild the factory, get the com well, it's going for Clokebot again. But they have to rebuild their factories. They lost their brawlers. All that loss happened outside of their ter well, sort of in their territory, but kind of in the middle. And the crow did not die. If that crow died, it would have been game. Because that the amount of metal that Felthos would have gotten from that. Would have been more than enough to rebuild quickly. Shadow One Sun, on the other hand, they... Oh, okay, there's the gunship plant. So, Failthos 
The question is, are they going to end up losing as a result of losing all those factories? They lost a lot of production time. They're just now able to produce again, but they have 60 metal. They have a lot of reclaim. They can just push units again and again. That's the one thing about killing factories, especially once your opponent has a lot of energy, is that killing factories means, yeah, they don't produce a lot, but they also store a lot of metal and a lot of energy. And if they have the energy to make it work with all the reclaim they're going to get, then they're still going to be fine. Still, good kill on the expansion. Does take that out. And the second expansion, it looks like it's about to go down. No real anti-air. Okay, some anti-air. Gremlins coming in. But at this point, ground forces as well with a lot of Rockos coming in here. And the Rockos being destroyed from Veilthos. Shadow One Sun pushing pretty hard. This crow is pretty safe. It could move in. It could continue moving in, but it's going to be risky. It's really going to come down to the fact that this Gremlin will go down. And the remaining Gremlins won't be able to move into position too much. But at this point, Felthos could still... They have a lot of metal to push in, but it doesn't matter. Felthos throws in the towel. Shadow One Sun wins thanks to that crow. Oh, also apparently people screaming at Felthos. I guess they got distracted at the very end, but yeah. Thanks to the crow. Good early scythe. A couple of bad scythe moves, and then the crow clinches it. Bit of a bizarre game, but those are always fun to watch. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you. Have a good night, everyone.